Hey guys, in this video, you will learn more about procedures and functions in Python. The first question that we have to ask ourselves is what is a procedure? Well, a procedure or a function for that matter is a block of code. So that's the first important piece of information. It's a block of code which only runs when it is called. So that's the second important piece of information, that when you write a procedure or a function, you are writing a block of code, and that piece of those instructions in that block of code is only run when that procedure or function is called. So imagine that you have a block of code written here with many instructions. This block of code will be given some name. Let's assume it's called X. And this code will only execute when we call that particular block of code using its name. In this case, it's called X. What is a procedure or a function? Well, in some programming languages, uh, you have a procedure and you have functions uh, like Delphi. Delphi is a programming language. And in this particular programming language, you write procedures and you write functions. In other programming languages, they just call them functions. It's not differentiated between a procedure and a function. They just call functions. And a programming language that uses something like that is Java. As I move forward explaining procedures and functions in Python, I'm going to use the term functions. So if you're familiar with another programming language like Delphi, where the use of procedures was used, just take note that when I refer to functions, it could be a procedure or it could be a function. So we know what a procedure or a function is. It's a block of code. Uh, why would we want to use a block of code? Well, one reason is it helps us to break down our code. So sometimes when we're writing programs, our programs can become very large. But by writing functions, it helps us to break up our code into smaller parts. And that becomes a lot easier to work with as opposed to looking at the program as one big whole. Here we have smaller parts that make up this whole. Another reason related to breaking up the code is that if there are any errors, when you are finding errors, and if you have blocks of code, then when you are debugging, that is finding errors, if there's an error in this particular block, then I confine myself just to that block and to look at the statements in that block and to determine what the error is without having to worry about the other blocks. So that's another reason why it helps when you break down your code into smaller parts. The another, yet another reason why we will make use of functions or blocks of code is that we can write the block of code once. And as I said, you give your block of code a name. So let's assume my block of code is called X and it does something. I've got a whole bunch of statements in here. I'm ex going to uh, execute this code when that block is called. So if I call the block X, then all of those statements are executed. And what we can then do is call it up many times. So we can call up this block of code many times through its name. So here I'm calling it once. And then if I wanted to execute again, I call it again a second time. And if I wanted to execute again, I call it by its name a third time. Each time I call up, each time I call up the block of code using its name, that 
those statements inside of the block will execute. So you prevent duplication of code, or in other words, you prevent the repetition of your code by using functions in this way. There are two types of functions that we get. The first type will be predefined functions, predefined, and the second is user-defined function. As the name suggests, predefined, they are already written. They already written code for us. So these functions are written for us by the programming language. In this case, it's Python. So all programming languages have predefined functions. By having predefined functions, we don't have to write the code. That's the good thing about it. The code is already written. All we need to do is we need to call up the functions. So if you're going to call up the function, it makes sense that you need to know what these functions are, and you should also know how to go about calling them. So that set of functions are predefined and the code is already written for us. So it can make our lives a lot easier instead of us having to write the code. The second set are user-defined functions. And as user-defined functions, these are for us, the programmer. This is for the programmer who writes these functions. Keep in mind that predefined functions are functions that are already written for us. However, what if there is some function that Python has not written for us and we want to write the block of code ourselves? Then by writing a user-defined function, we have that flexibility. We have the flexibility to write the function ourselves and then to call up that function. So it behaves in the same way. You have a block of code. The block of code is given some name and you then call up that particular function by its name. So it's a two-step process. One is you write the code and two, you call up the code. Keep in mind with predefined functions, the code is already written for us. And then all we need to do is call up the function using its name. Let's look at an example of a predefined function. We are all very familiar with the input statement. We called it the input statement. This is actually a predefined function. We have not written the code for input. This code has already been written for us. All we are doing is we are calling up the function. So this is a typical example of a predefined function. And uh, keeping this in mind, you will then think back and I'm sure you'll find many, many, many different types of predefined functions that are, have been written for us. The focus of this video is on how do we go about writing user-defined functions. Well, we spoke about the block of code. So this is the block of code, right? There's always two parts to writing a function. So you have a block of code and that's my block where you define the function. So we all functions start with DEF. So that means we are defining a particular block of code. We give the function a name. So that is the name of the function. And then we usually use brackets, uh, an opening and a closing round bracket. So that means we are defining a function. We also use the two dots and then we indent all the statements that we are putting inside of your function. I've simply put three print statements. 
However, you can have any statements you want to inside of a function. You can make use of variables. Uh, you can make use of assignment statements. You can make use of if statements inside of the function. You can make use of for uh, loop statements. You are not confined to what you can use in a function. Whatever statements you make use of, when you call the function, which is the second step, when you call the function, then only, then only, and this is important, then only the code will execute. So having a function on its own and not calling the function is actually useless. You must have a function and then call the function for the code for the code to execute for the block. Remember, that's the block. You want the code inside of the block to execute, and it will only execute once you call up the function. How do you call it? You call it up using its name, because every function must be given a particular name. So through its name, you call it up, and the function will then execute. How does it actually work as you're doing this in Python? Well, here we know that this is a, a comment. So that's my comment that just simply says we are defining the function. And as Python is going through your program, it does so uh, step by step from the beginning as it goes down. When it finds DEF, it knows it's a function and that entire block is actually ignored. Nothing happens. It does nothing. It does not execute the statements. It knows that is a block. Python will know, wait until the block is called, then only you execute it. So at that point, nothing happens. Here we have another comment. We have another comment. And then at this stage, we are saying display. And the name of this function is display. At that stage, Python will go and find the particular function, which is here, display, and it will start executing the steps. It's going to say print hello, print Tigger, print how are you. So those three statements are then displayed. And then when the function is completed, it goes back to wherever it came from, which is there. And if there were more statements here, if there were more statements, then those statements will execute afterward. So when the function is called, it goes to that block. When it's finished, it comes back to wherever it was and it then continues. So if I had another, uh, maybe a print statement here, and I could have said print, uh, after calling the display function. So this now, this print statement, once I, firstly, you're going to go to the display function. It displays, hello, Tigger, how are you? Once it's finished with that block, it comes back and moves to the next statement. And it's going to print after calling the display function. So this statement is going to be displayed after we had called the display function. Now, there's nothing stopping me from calling the display function many times. So I've called display, I've then got another print statement, and I could have had called display again. So what would happen in this case? Remember, we start from the beginning. We ignore this block because it's a function. We come here. This is calling display, takes us to the block, executes the code, and takes you back to the next line, which is another print statement. After that print statement, I'm calling the function again which is going to take me back 
to display, execute the statements, and then take me back to this particular function call. So that's the nice thing about a function. You can write it once, but you can call it as many times as you want to. And this helps with, uh, it prevents you from duplicating your code. Let's look at another, uh, another example. So remember, if I'm executing this particular code, so I can see there's a block, there's a definition, a function definition. What's the name of this function? It's called display one. And then I keep moving down, I keep moving down, and I come across a second function. You can have as many functions as you want to. So there's a second block. And the name of this function is called display two. So the first function is display one, the second function is display two. And remember that these are ignored. Python is not going to execute this code because they are just function functions and it's going to move on. And when it comes here, you are calling display one. So that's gonna take you to this block and it's gonna execute hello Tigger. And it's then going to take you back from where the block, where the function was called. And it then goes to the second statement. And you may be thinking, but I made a mistake. That should have been display two. No, I deliberately put display one again. And it means I am going back to display one. And I'm coming back. Obviously, when I go to display one, it'll ex execute those two statements. And then I come back to display one. So in this particular example, we've got two functions, but this particular function is useless. It's there, but unless I call the function, unless I say display two, that function is serving no purpose. Even though I've written the code, that code is not going to execute until I call up, until I call up the function. So keep that in mind. When you write a function, you need to call up the function so that the code can then execute. Let's go into uh, a compiler and let's, uh, let's look at how we can write some code and you can see it actually work. So I'm gonna define a function. So I'll call it this, uh, let's call it menu. Uh, menu and colon. And in my menu, I'm going to say print. Um, let's put down breakfast, print, lunch. Well, it should be lunch like that. And let's go print. Uh, and we're going to go supper. So I'm creating a menu with three print statements. Uh, let's give the user a choice. One is breakfast, two is lunch, and three is supper. So that's my block that I've written. And now if I write the block and don't call it, nothing is going to happen. It, it, there it is. It, it's, it's, it's telling me uh, that you've got a definition menu and well, it's telling me actually that I need brackets around it. That's the, the, the invalid syntax. You must have the brackets around your function call. So there we are. Now that has been corrected. I've got it, but nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. That's because I have not called the function. So now I'm calling the function. And this time around, there we are. It prints number one, breakfast, two, lunch, three, supper. If I choose to call menu a second time, 
So I give that a run. And you will notice it calls breakfast, lunch, supper, breakfast, lunch, supper. It calls it twice. Um, for that matter, I could have put this inside of a for loop. I could call it multiple times for x in range uh, 1, comma, 4. Remember that will run three times. And I'm going to call up menu. Now menu is being called inside of a for loop. So I'm calling this block of code four, well, not four times, three times, because the range is running from one to one less, one to three. So it's going to print breakfast, lunch, and supper three times. Let's give that a try. And here you will see that's one, that's two, and this is the third time. That is how you would go about writing a particular uh, function and then calling it up. And remember, I could have had multiple functions. Uh, all that I would have needed to have done is started another definition, give it a name, and give it the statements that you need to. And after defining that block, which is my function, remember, you must call it for the code to execute. Uh, I hope this video helps you in understanding, in giving you a basic understanding of how to write the function. And then very important is the calling of the function. Thank you and goodbye.